Well, hello there. I hope everyone is staying well and narcissist free prior to these holidays. Um, we know that the holidays are Hoover hell for many people. And you may or may not have heard from your narcissist if you've tried to go no contact. Um, but regardless, I think people should be prepared for the tactics they use to try to upset you, get you to come back, or just to get their narcissistic supply. As you know, they try to get responses, uh, whether good or bad, because it feeds them. You know, if you get upset or try to defend yourself, if they say something that is upsetting, it's just feeding their hunger for narcissistic supply. That's what demons live for, is to get that fuel from you, to get that upset from you, to knock you off of your rocker, confuse you, upset you, have you in tears. They love that. That's what they live for. And that's how you know that they are demonic in nature. Normal people have empathy. They, you know, would never want to hurt another human being. And these aren't just hurtful people. These are pretty much sadomasochistic type of people that they appear normal, they appear to be pillars of the community and very friendly and gregarious and well uh, adjusted in society. That's what they appear to look like and appear to be to most people. But to the target, uh, the target knows them to be very sadomasochistic um, without empathy, without guilt or remorse. And I do want to clear up something. I said that, you know, they'll never apologize. Well, that was maybe a, a, a mistake wording it like that. They do, narcissists will write an apologetic email or text or letter, um, but it's not sincere. Just know that. What I meant was they never give a sincere apology. And the best apology is changed behavior. You know that and I know that. So unless you see drastically changed behavior, which the narcissist, you know, never displays, uh, there's no cure for them. They don't tend to get better. Um, then, you know, you are to assume that, you know, they are the same. There really isn't a cure. They can say whatever they want, but the actions speak louder than words and changed behavior is the best apology. So if they come back to you and say, you know, why don't you believe me? I love you. I want a future with you or whatever it is. Or why don't you come and talk about this? And they want to hoover you back for whatever reason to discuss things or to make it up to you. Just know that's not going to happen. I've never heard a time where a hoover went well. Have you? <laughs> Have you had a hoover that went well so far? So it's like putting your hand on a stove over and over again and expecting not to get burnt. After a while, you just don't want to put your hand on the stove anymore, correct? You learn. Every time you do that, you get burned. And every time you respond to a hoover, it's just to abuse you even more. They do something far worse. So if you go no contact and you discard the narcissist, they will hoover you and think of any way to get you back. They'll say they'll change. They want a future. They'll make it up to you. Um, they have money for you. Whatever they offer, it's not going to happen. What's going to happen is, you know, triple the abuse the next time. That's their intention. They have to win. You know this. The narcissist has to win. So if you discarded them, the only reason they're hoovering you back is so they can discard you. That's usually what happens. So just heads up on that. You do not want to accept a Hoover at any point from a narcissist because it never, ever goes well. You will regret it and you will get hurt far worse. But just know they will apologize sometimes, but it's not sincere. You know, you may get text messages, voicemail messages that pull at your heartstrings because they sound sincere. But again, l let the actions follow. You know, and for a while they may start love bombing again, which is what they do to try to get you back. But it's not going to be for long. They get bored very easily. They'll start falling back on their other forms of supply. 
And again, forms of supply don't have to be a romantic interest. If this is a romantic interest of yours that's the narcissist, uh, yes, it could be past exes or people they have on a Rolodex, basically, that they flip through when they're bored. You know, uh, it took me a long time to figure out that basically when they're calling you wanting to have dinner or something, basically it's because, you know, they've gone through their Rolodex and nobody else is available or somebody else discarded them that's a form of supply or their family which was their form of supply, you know, they got attention from their siblings, their kids, their, you know, whoever it is in their family that was entertaining them uh, during their boredom is no longer available. They have to be entertained. I'm sure you know, narcissists wear you out. They're always in their car texting you on their way somewhere. They have to have people around them 24-7. They get bored very easily and they're exhausting completely exhausting. So if they are hoovering you many times, it's because um, the new form of supply dumped them, or if the new form of supply was their family members, you know, they're not available or got tired of them. Uh, you know, something happened, and they just pull out their Rolodex of supply and start recycling. So I call them, you know, they recycle people. And you will be recycled and discarded and recycled and discarded at their will. It's for their entertainment, for their boredom, basically. And they won't tell you why. It's for their own reasons because they do what they want to do that's best for them. Also figure out that, um, you know, if a fight comes out of the blue, many times it's so they can be with another form of supply. Narcissists will start an argument over nothing, insult you, call you names, and storm off because they know they have a trip planned with another form of supply. What better way to create distance and, you know, lack of communication so they can go do what they want to do with someone else? Chances are you haven't seen any changed change in behavior, have you? You may see some love bombing like they did in the beginning. But as far as um, really following through for an extended period of time, you know, see how long that is. It's not going to be long, and they're, they're just going to hurt you even worse. As I said, I've never heard of a Hoover that went well. So you don't want to prolong your pain. You don't want to waste your time. You don't want to have something even worse happen and be abused even more to the point where it's, it's going to take longer to recover because with each Hoover you accept is more pain and more pain is going to take you know, more time to recover. And the extent and the, the type of uh, abuse gets worse. So if it's hard to wrap your head around the abuse that's already happened, you know, the abuse that's about to come is far worse. You know, ask anybody that survived it. They really wish that they, um, you know, didn't accept the Hoovers, you know, that uh, from the narcissist. They wish that they just kept no contact on the first one. It would have saved them a lot of pain and a lot of uh, heartache and wasted time and energy. And it would have been far easier to, you know, recover. But, um, you know, don't beat yourself up, like I said, you know, for most people, it takes, you know, several times, you know, of them going back to the narcissist for them to realize what's going on. And thank God, with these YouTube videos, people are getting the information out, so they can, you know, act accordingly sooner and spare themselves a lot of pain. Now, just know that the hoovers that the narcissist gives will be, you know, their attempts at just uh, trying to get you back. And some of the examples would be, they'll say you left something in their car, uh, you left something at their home, they want to return it to you. If you ask them what it is, they'll just be kind of vague, or maybe they'll describe something that isn't left there. 
Uh, but even if you did leave something there, is it really worth it? Is it really worth going through pain and having them discard you when you go to get that item? Because that's what's going to happen. Something's going to happen at that Hoover <laughs> that you're not expecting that's going to make you feel foolish even going there. They never end well. Uh, I've heard of things where uh, the person responds to the Hoover and um, when they go to meet the narcissist, you know, they're interrupted with phone calls from another supply or, you know, something from someone else is found in the car. Uh, you know, things like that happen. Or they go to the home of the narcissist and someone else is there. Um, it's all intended to hurt the target again. So it's a setup, basically. They do these demonic setups. And I ask you, if someone's of God, would they do that? No. These are demonic manipulations from Satan himself. I've heard of things where the narcissist you know, asked the target to go out on Valentine's Day and the target agreed and the whole evening was a nightmare. The narcissist was acting awful like someone had canceled on them and the target was just the replacement date. It was obnoxious all dinner long, was complaining to the manager, was very miserable made the target's Valentine's Day miserable. And then on the way home, the target um, addressed something that was a lie that the, that the narcissist had said and just asked them basically, like, why did you tell this lie? And then, of course, you get narcissistic rage. The narcissist started raging in the car, stopped the car in front of their home, and uh, told the target to get out, like ordered the target out of the car. And it was an SUV. It was very high off the ground, they said. And um, so the narcissist ordered them to open the door and get out and get into their own car and leave. They weren't married. So the target's in tears, said, my God, why did I accept this Hoover for Valentine's Day? Um, they're, they're still the same. They're acting horrifically ruined my night and not only that they I just caught them in a lie again and so the narcissist doesn't like to be caught ordered them out of the SUV stopped the car and when the target opened the car door the narcissist stepped on the gas so the target fell out of the passenger side of the car a moving car onto the grass and was injured now, I ask you, who does that? Who does that to? What normal person who cares about somebody would do something like that? So needless to say, was that worth it for Valentine's Day <laughs> to accept that, that Hoover? No. The person regretted it wholeheartedly. And there's story after story about things like that, that they wish they just didn't accept the Hoover. Holidays or not, whether it's Christmas, Valentine's Day, uh, you know, birthday, anniversary, whatever it is, just know that you're going to regret it. It's not going to end well. It could seem like a good idea at the time, or they may seem remorseful, but basically, as I said, actions speak louder than words, and the best indication of an apology, a sincere apology, is changed behavior. And that was behavior that was escalated at the time, that was a far worse behavior. So when you do try to accept, a, when you do accept a Hoover, they just take you for a fool. They think, wow, this person's a pushover, so now I can do worse. And we don't think that way. Good people don't think that way, but the narcissist does because their boss is Satan himself. You have to understand that. They're there to destroy you. They're there to destroy your good heart, your soul, confuse you, depress you, so you cannot do what God called you to do in this life, which is something of good for the Lord. And so 
basically the narcissist is taking up your oxygen, taking up your time, confusing you, delaying you, make it so you're not productive, make it so you're not feeling well, so you're exhausted up all night, so you're crying. You can be the strongest person, and they just have the ability to go up, down, push, pull. It's very hard to explain to other people that haven't experienced it. It is a demonic stronghold. That's why it's hard to explain. How do you explain a demonic stronghold to someone? How do you explain a witchcraft to someone? How do you explain something that is of the adversary? And something else to think about here, everybody. If something is spiritual in nature, if something is supernatural, spiritual, if this is a, a battle of good and evil, and the tactics used are supernatural and demonic, and it's spiritual warfare, you cannot attack it with earthly means. Think about it. You can't, you know, attack or defend yourself from something that is spiritual in nature, something that is demonically induced with earthly tactics. It just doesn't work. Okay? That's why counseling doesn't work for the narcissist. That's why medicine isn't available for their dis disease because it's not a disease. There's nothing physically wrong with these people. There's no gene for narcissism. There's no medicine they can take. They show up for counseling. They're not going to change. There's no cure. A lot of counselors won't handle narcissists because it's pointless. So what is it then? What is it? It's called, it's spiritual in nature. It is demonic spiritual warfare against God's people. And you cannot deal with it with earthly means. You need to pray to the Lord. As I said in my prior videos, call on your warrior angels. They are amazing. They're just standing at attention, waiting to help you with fight your battles. They understand what you're under. The Lord knows what you're dealing with. The Lord's dealt with the adversary on earth as well. All of the temptations, all of the tactics the adversary used to try to, um, you know, influence our Lord when he was walking this earth. He understands the tactics of the adversary and that God's people will be targeted. And the warrior angels are at attention, ready to fight your battles and ready to defend you. We just don't call on them when we should. So pray to the Lord, call on the warrior angels, ask for the strength to deal with the narcissist and the strength to resist the Hoovers. And just know that they never end well. They'll say, let's spread the holidays together or I have a gift for you, and you feel like, yeah, they owe me. You know, maybe they, I should go for the gift. Maybe I should, you know, meet this person, see what they have to say. Maybe they've changed. And I'm telling you right now, a demon is a demon is a demon. <laughs> you know, they can be in some kind of earthly meat suit, but basically they're a demon. I saw them in my dream. The Lord showed me the person I was dealing with, and then at the next part of the dream, I went to turn to look at them, and they were not human anymore. They were still holding me the same way, but they had changed forms into their demon form. And I said the name of Jesus and woke up. I've had other spiritual warfare dreams that tell me that, yes, believers are under attack. The adversary is pulling out all stops now to try to get to believers. And, you know, this happened in the days of Noah. There were fallen angels on earth influencing, trying to uh, have relations with the human women. And uh, as I said, I've met many uh, narcissistic women on this earth as well. They are around, they are, they their tactics are the same manipulations, the same evil. They do the same kind of setups. Uh, so I will address that in another video and the tactics that the women malignant narcissists use. 
but whether male or female, these are demonically influenced. They may be walking around like human beings, but their behavior speaks for itself, not human. Okay? It isn't just a jerk. It isn't just somebody that treats you bad or somebody that just, you know, uh, acts poorly. This is spiritual warfare that's off the charts. And you know that, and I know that. It's very hard to explain it to other people that haven't experienced one of these types. But, as I said, the adversary doesn't bother those he already has. He's going to bother the ones he doesn't have. Which is why you've been targeted, my friend. So stay, stay strong. I will have more um, videos coming up. And as I said, I will address the female narcissists and their tactics. Because, hmm, I've seen that as well. I'm hearing from people all over the globe. And their behavior seems to be pretty much the same. And there's no medical reason. They can't be counseled because, as I said, you cannot uh, handle spiritual warfare with earthly tactics. It does not work. So trust me, um, I will have more prayers coming up as well to deliver you from the narcissist and to break the strongholds. And um, I'll, I should have those coming up shortly. But, you know, that is the tactic, is to pray for you know, the ability to break the strongholds, pray for the Holy Spirit, for the anointing that gives you power. That's what the apostles experienced at Pentecost, and um, that's what I experienced as well and many others. It gives you the power to go no contact. It gives you the power to know you are a greater being in the Lord Jesus Christ, and that we in Christ are much more powerful than anybody with demonic spirits in them by far we just have to use that authority take charge and cast those demons away from our lives so with that um, <laughs> I'll see you again soon everybody but stay strong this holiday season and I hope the prayers coming up in the next video will be of help to you and that um, you know you can use them when needed when you need a boost of prayer and strength but trust me, the Lord is faithful. Spend time with Him. Call upon Him. Learn to be alone with the Lord. And the more time you spend alone with the Lord, um, the stronger you get. So thanks, everybody. I'll continue to keep you in prayer. If anybody needs prayers, put your initials or your first name in the comments below. I'd be more than happy to pray for you. And everybody pray for each other, too, on this channel. Because uh, we know what it's like. We know the difficulties. And uh, it helps. Believe me, prayer helps and does wonders. So I hope this was helpful, helpful to you guys. And I'll be back soon with more. So take care and God bless everyone.